Hello student, I am Tumpa Chakraborty from Department of Computer Science of Barakpur Rashtuguru Surendranath College. Today we are going to discuss the topic switching technique of computer network. This is in the syllabus of UG semester 3, paper code CMSA code 07T. This topic is one of the most important topic of computer network and this topic is also helpful for the student of PG semester 1. These are the contents that I will discuss with you why switching is important, now what is switch network, then different type of switching techniques, their advantages and their disadvantages. After that the structure of the switches and what are the difference between the circuit switch and the packet switch. I will discuss all the topic. First, why switching is important? As we all know that a network is a set of connected device. When multiple device want to communicate with each other, we have to provide one to one connection between each pair of devices. That means we have to provide a dedicated path between each pair of devices. So we have to create point to point connection between all pair of devices which we can see in mesh topology or we can connect all the node to a central node as we can see in star topology. But in a large network, it is not possible to create point to point dedicated path between every pair of nodes. Why? Because the number of link and the length of link is too much. So it is very cost efficient and majority of the link most of the time become idle. So it is very much impractical and wasteful to create a point to point connection between each pair of devices for a large network. Instead of create a point to point network, we can solve this problem by creating a switch network. So, the solution of this limitation is switching. What is switch network? A switch network consists of a series of interlink nodes which are called switch. Switch create a temporary connection between two or more devices. In this figure we can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are switches and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L all are the end user. Some switches directly connected with the end user. This type of switches is called the edges and some switches are directly connected with the another switches which is used only for the routing purpose and it is called distributed switch. In this figure we can see that switch 4 is used only for the routing purpose because switch 4 is directly connected with another switches and switch 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 are directly connected with the user. That means these switches are called the edges switches. What are the function of the switches? A switch is a multi-port network device. That means switch has many ports and uh, in this port 
different type of uh, nodes like it may be computer, it may be another device are plugged in. Once a device is connected via switch, then it identifies its MAC address. That means medium access control address which is also known as hardware address. When a data enter into a switch via some port, then the switch can identify from which device the data is incoming and to where the data is passed. Switch this type of function perform at the data link layer. Some switch can process the data at the network layer by combining the routing function. This type of switch is called multi-layer switch. Switch also allow unicast, multicast and broadcast communication and it also support full duplex mode for data communication and some switches also perform some error checking before forwarding the data into the next switches. Now what is switching? Switching is the process to transfer data that is coming in a port to the another port that leading to the destination. When data come in a port, it is called ingress and when data leave the port, it is called egress. So in a large network, if there are multiple paths exist, then switching help in deciding the best route of the network and it also provide the feelings like one to one communication between the sender and the receiver. Switching allow both the services, it may be connection oriented or it may be connection less. When we use the connection less service, that means when we use connection less communication, first the user create data and they can send the data via any switches. That means there are no need, there are no need pre handshaking method. That means data cannot follow any particular route. But when we use connection oriented communication, first the sender create a route between the uh, sender and the receiver, we have to create a route then on data, all data must follow the same route. This type of communication is called connection oriented communication. There are three type of switch network. One is called the circuit switch network, second is called the packet switch network and another is called message switch network. Packet switch network is also categorized into two types data gram network and the virtual circuit network. First we discuss the circuit switch network. When two users communicate with each other via a dedicated path, that means via a physical path, then it is called circuit switching. That means circuit switch is a connection oriented network. In that type of network, all switches are connected by a physical link and the connection between two stations is a dedicated path made of one or, or more links. This link is divided into n channel, channel by using FDM or TDM technique. FDM means frequency division multiplexing and TDM means time division multiplexing. When we use FDM technique, that means the total bandwidth is divided into n channel and each channel use 
separately by using the concept of guard band. And when we use TDM technique, the total link is divided into time slot and each slot used separately. Circuit switching take place at the physical layer. That is the reason why the in circuit switching method data passes as a signal. Before communication, we have to create a connection between the sender and the receiver. So, at the time of the circuit establishment and during the data communication time, all resources must reserved. Resources like the bandwidth of the FDM, the time slot of TDM, the switch, uh, switch buffer, switch input and the output port, switch processing time, etc. And there is a, uh, no addressing involved during data transfer phase because the end to end addressing is needed at the phase of circuit establishment. That means circuit switching goes through the three phases. First setup phase, then data transfer phase, then tear down phase. At setup phase, first we have to create a dedicated path between a sender and a receiver. Suppose A want to send our data to D. First A create a request signal which contain the full destination address of the receiver and send it to the send it to the uh, receiver via the switches 1 2 and 3 when they receive the request then it send back an acknowledgement via the same switches in opposite direction once a receive the acknowledgement then we can say that the circuit is established and this phase is called the setup phase. Once the circuit is created, then A can send data to D. This phase is called the data transfer phase. Once the data communication is done, then a special signal sent to each switch so that they can release the resources. So the resources can use by uh, another user. One example of circuit switch network is telephone network. In this figure we can see the telephone network where telephone are the end user and telephone are directly connected with the end offices. All the end offices are directly connected to the toll offices and all the toll offices are directly connected to the uh, intermediate switching offices. These all offices act like a switch. When a sender want to communicate another one, then first dial a number and they after that they communicate with each other. So dialing a number and create a connection is the first phase of the circuit switching and when they communicate with each other, it is the phase of data transfer and when the communication is done, then they cut the line, it is called the tear down phase. Now the advantages, the advantages of circuit switching, once the circuit is established, then data communication done without any delay. That means no overhead after call setup. All data passes in order at the destination and this type of uh, switch network is very suitable for continuous traffic. And what are the disadvantages? The main dis disadvantage of the circuit switching is initial delay. That means the time required for call setup or we can say circuit establishment. So uh, we can calculate total delay, the circuit establishment time plus data transfer time plus tear down time. It is not efficient for busty traffic and it is not efficient 
like other two types of switching technique because all resources are allocated during the entire duration of communication and it is not efficient due to its fixed bandwidth because the data is rate always same. Now coming to the message switch network. It is a connection less network that means there is no need to create a connection between a sender and the receiver. It takes place at the network layer that means here we use multi stage switch. When a station want to send a message then the message then full destination address is appended with the message. First the total message sent to a switch the switch store the entire message then forward to the another switch or the destination. So the process is first store the entire message then forward the message that why that is why the message switching is also called store and forward method. In this figure if we can see if A want to send a message to B first A create a message and that include the destination address. First send the message to switch 1. When switch 1 receive the message first it store the message then forward to the another switch that is switch 2. Switch 2 do the same first store the whole message then forward the message to B. That is the reason it's, it is also known as store and forward method. The advantage of message switching is channel is not blocked, more device can share the channel and packet are accepted even under a heavy tra traffic. Message priority can be used to satisfy the requirement if any. Now the disadvantages, it require enough storage because each switch must store the message then forward the message to the another switch. So each switch require huge amount of storage. It is the disadvantage of message switching. Another disadvantage is it is very slow due to store and forward technique. Now coming to packet switch network. It was developed in 1970 for long distance data communication. One disadvantage of message switching is the uh, sender always send the whole message to the another switch or the destination. To overcome this limitation, we in packet switching, we first divide the message into a small piece, small pieces which may be fixed length or variable length. These pieces is called the packet. Each packet contain some control information, the destination address, the source address uh, and some other information and each packet route to the network freely independently and the packet can arrive at the destination out of order. So at the destination uh, the receiver uh, has to arrange the uh, packet uh, based on the sequence number. There are two type of packet switching one is datagram approach and another is virtual circuit approach. First we discuss datagram approach. Datagram approach, datagram uh, network is a connection less network. It is uh, uh, take place at uh, network layer. That means here no connection is required for data transfer. First message is divided into packet and each packet contain the necessary addressing and the uh, sequence number and some control information. And the packet 
is the pa uh, packet is treated independently and uh, allow to uh, take variety of uh, possible path through the network. Packet with the same destination address do not follow the same route, they may arrive out of sequence at the destination. So, at the destination the receiver uh, has to uh, order, reorder them based on the sequence number. In this example, we can see A want to send a message to X, first A divide the message uh, into 4 packet 1, 2, 3, 4 with the sequence number 1, 2, 3, 4 and we can see that packet, one, packet number 1 follow the another route, packet number 2 follow another route and packet number 3 goes through goes via another switches. So, at the destination point we can see packet number 1 arrive first, then 4, then 3 and then 2. So, the receiver X has to rearrange the packet based on the sequence number. So, what is the delay of the datagram approach? The delay is not uniform for the packet of a message. Why? Because it is not necessary that all packet follow the same route. If T is the transmission time, P is the propagation time and W is the waiting time for each switches and if n number of packet can travel n number of node, then we can calculate n minus 1 into T plus n minus 1 into P plus W1, W2 dot dot W n minus 2 time. This is the total delay of a packet. The advantage of datagram approach is there is no need to create any connection and packet can uh, arrive via any switches and it is more flexible because there is no need of circuit establishment and if a node fail, if a link congested then the node or link can be avoided, packet can uh, select another route. So, it these are the advantages of packet uh, datagram approach. Now, disadvantages packet may arrive at the destination out of order. So, uh, there is some sorting algorithm at the destination point to rearrange them. And another disadvantage is if a node damage then all the packet that are in queue are lost. Now coming to the virtual circuit approach. Virtual circuit network is a cross of circuit switch network and datagram approach. It is normally implemented at data link layer. It is a connection oriented network that means first we have to create a connection between the sender and the receiver. Instead of using a destination address, here we use a identifier to create a connection between sender and the receiver. This identifier is called virtual circuit identifier. It is a very small number and uh, it is used between two switches uh, with frame, we can also say packet or frame. Some example of virtual circuit network are x25 frame relay ATM. In virtual circuit approach, here we can also use or also go through three phases. One is called the connection establishment, then data transfer, then connection release. At the connection establishment phase, first a user send a request that containing the full destination address to the receiver via some switches. When the request enter, suppose here A want to send a message to X, 
first a create a request signal which hold the full destination address when it uh, send to switch 1 then it has one VCI number and when switch 1 send this request to switch number 3 then it has another VCI number. Same as uh, say switch 3 send this uh, request signal to switch 4 with another VCI and switch 4 then forward the request to X. When X receive the request signal then it send an acknowledgement via the same switches using the help of virtual circuit identifier. When A receive the signal then we can say connection is established. Now we can send the data. When A create a message like datagram approach it first divide the message into packet and put a sequence number and all the packet follow the same route which are created by at the connection establishment phase. When the connection is done then we release the virtual circuit. So what is the delay time of virtual circuit network? The delay is uniform for each packet because all the packet must follow the same route. If a packet uh, travel uh, n number of nodes and T is the transmission time and P is the propagation time, then total delay is circuit setup time plus n minus 1 T transmission time plus n minus 1 P propagation time plus tear down time. Here no waiting time required for each switch. The advantages of virtual circuit network is network can provide sequencing, sequencing. That means all the packet transfer to the receiver in order and it can perform some error control. Packets are forwarded more quickly in virtual circuit network because of virtual circuit identifier. There are no routing decision made for each packet. So now the disadvantages, it is very expensive to implement a virtual circuit network. And if a node fails, then all the virtual circuit that passes through the node fail. So we have to create a new circuit for further communication. Now the structure of the switches. The structure of the circuit switch and packet switch are different. First we discuss about the structure of circuit switch. We can use two techniques in circuit switches. One is called the space division switch and another is called the time division switch. In space division switch, the path in a circuit are separated from one another spatially. This type of switch first used only for the analog network. Now it is used for both analog and the digital network. Crossbar switch and multi-stage switch are the space division switches. First we discuss the crossbar switch. In this figure we see that it is a crossbar switch here 1 to 3 is a input line and 1 uh, and Roman 1 2 3 4 are the output line. That means input line are connected with the output line in a grid which is a micro switch that is made up of transistor and this is also known as a cross point. So in crossbar switch number of cross point is n into m. If we consider the number of input 15 and number of output, output 15 then total number of cross point is 225. This number is huge. 
So it is the limitation of the crossbar switch. Another limitation is we can use one row and one column at a time and only 25 percentage of cross point use at a time. So these are the limitation of crossbar switch. To overcome this limitation of crossbar switch, we use multi-state switch. Instead of use a single crossbar, we can use multiple crossbar in different stages. In this example, we see there are three stages in the uh, if the total number of input line is 15 that means capital N is 15 then first we have to divide this input line into number of line group and if the uh, total output line is 15 then it also divide the n small n number of line group. In the first stage we can see here we use three crossbar switch and each crossbar switch has five number of input line. So at the first stage we require capital N by small n that means three number of switches and at the stage three at the last stage we also use the number of output line is 15 and we uh, each group uh, contain a small n number of output line that is 5. So capital N by small n number of crossbar suite is required here. In the middle stage we always use less number of switches than the first stage and the third stage. Here number of uh, crossbar in middle stage is k we use here two number of crossbar switch and the output line of each crossbar switch in stage 1 is directly connected to the crossbar of the stage 2 and the output line of the crossbar of stage 2 is directly connected to the input line of stage 3. So, total number of cross point required capital N by small n into n into k plus k into capital N by small n into capital N by small n plus capital N by small n into k into n because the in the first stage each crossbar has capital N sorry small n into k number of cross point and in middle stage each crossbar has capital N divided by small n into capital N divided by small n number of cross point and in third stage each crossbar has k into n number of cross point. So total cross point is 2k capital N plus k into capital N by small n to the power 2. So for 15 number of input line and 15 number of output line we require only 78 number of cross point which is much, uh, much less than crossbar switch. So we can use minimum number of cross point and we can use maximum number of link than crossbar switch. In time division switch we use the concept of time division multiplexing inside the switch. This popular technique is called time slot interchange. It consists of RAM with several memory location and a control unit. The RAM fill up with the data that are coming from the time slot and send to the data into the another port based on the decision of control unit. This is the structure of time division 
switch. We can also use the both time and the space division switch. In this figure, we see that the uh, in first stage we use multiple time division switch and in middle stage we use the crossbar switch and in last stage we use again the time division switch. All the input line are directly connected to the time division multiplexer and all the output line of the time division switches are directly connected with the crossbar switch which is used as the input line of the crossbar switch. Here we can also use the multi-stage switch instead of a crossbar switch. And the output line of the crossbar switch are directly connected to the another time division switches as a input line. And the all output line of the time division switches are connected to the time division demultiplexer. And these all are the output port. Now coming to the packet switches. The uh, packet switches has four components, input port, output port, routing processor and switching fabric. The input port perform the function of data link layer and the physical layer. That means it first receive the signal and convert it into bit and store the data into its buffer and then send it to the switching fabric. Switching fabric is a crossbar switch and we here we make some decision using the help of routing processor that forward the data to which port that leading to the destination. Routing processor first look at, look at the lookup table which is a table that contain all the information that are directly connected to the switch and send the data to the output port. Output port perform the same function like input port but in reverse order. That means it first receive the bit, store the bit and convert it into a signal. This is all about the switching technique and the structure of the switches. Thank you.